Yo guys and welcome on in. Today let's talk about the Powder of Knowledge shop. As you can see in the bottom left, this current powder shop will be refreshing in 17 hours and... Oh, just changed 17 hours. So hopefully Kujar and I can get this video out to you guys before the 17 hours are done. If not, well hopefully you kind of just had an idea. But next time I'll make a video sooner and we'll, we'll do these powder uh, knowledge shop videos more often, okay? So let's talk about the current rotation real fast. In this rotation, we have Abyssal Crown, Bloodstone, Border Coin, Noble Oath, Seer Ren, Rosa Hargana, Ellie's Knife, and Water's Origin. Now, before I get to the juicy stuff, let's talk about the four stars real fast. I don't think, guys, unless you're super new and let's say you just never picked up something like an Aureus, there's not too many four star artifacts that I, I would advise picking up from the shop be just because four stars are so common. You'll get them eventually. The only exception I would say would be like Taga Hells and maybe like an Aureus if you just never found one because it is very nice for PvE progression and early PvP. My goodness, I'm just getting interrupted here. <laughs> All right, so four stars I, I think you shouldn't buy unless it's like Taga Hells in the shop and then um, something like an Aureus. So the rest of these pretty much avoid guys because what I'm about to tell you all about powder knowledge is very hard to come by. Um, you want to save as much of it as you can for things like these. So let's go to the five star artifacts in the current rotation. We have Abyssal Crown, Bloodstone, Border Coin, and Noble Oath. Let's start with Noble Oath. Pretty good for units like Fighter Maya, but definitely I would not pick one up if you are uh, newer and kind of don't have a lot of powered knowledge. Definitely not required for anyone, but you could use it for things like Wyvern 13 tanking. Um, like I said, Fighter Maya, it's really nice on her for all things PvP, but probably avoid, okay? Probably avoid unless you just have a ton of powder and you have one of those units. Next one up, Border Coin. Um, some people actually do use this on Sermia. You can either use like Portrait or Border Coin, but I also don't think it's a must have. I would try and avoid this unless you're a huge Sermia fan. I think she's really the only warrior that uses this. And in which case, a lot of times you can just use Portrait too, guys. Border Coin may be more min maxable depending on like your setup. But yeah, like I said, guys, unless you're swimming in Powder Knowledge, probably avoid Border Coin as well, okay? Even though it is good. Third Bloodstone, this one's a little bit trickier. If you've been playing a while and you haven't had one of these, it's kind of nice. I've picked, I've used one here and there. I think I used one in Abyss 100. I know some people use it in like Azimanac 13. Some people actually just use it all the time for their Seaside Bologna's if you don't have drink, for example. It's kind of, it's kind of nice to have if your Ranger does enough damage. You don't expect guys, if you have like a Iceria or someone more utility oriented, the healing is very low, especially if it's not max limit bro uh, broken. And if you're not doing a lot of damage, it doesn't heal too much. But that being said, maybe I could see people picking this up if you don't have this artifact I'm about to talk about right above. Yeah, if you've been looking at a guide or something and, you, and a lot of people are suggesting Bloodstone and you think you can make good use of it, maybe pick one up, but be very careful. It's You can definitely get through the game without it. It's just kind of nice to have. But this artifact we're about to go over, Abyssal Crown. And man, is that artwork good, guys. I hope everyone picks up at least one Abyssal Crown. Please, if you ever want to play any type of PvP, pick up at least one Abyssal Crown. If you're a PvE only player, you really don't need this. Most enemies are immune to stun. Any, most bosses are immune to stun in PvE. But for PvP especially, guys, unless this artifact gets changed, fixed, nerfed, whatever, it is insanely strong. It can straight up just win you games right off the bat. There's a lot of powerful mages that can make very good use of this, like um, Bazaar, Dizzy, almost any mage. I've, I've seen some Spectre Tenebrias run this. Any mage can almost put this on if they don't have like um, some artifact, other artifact you desperately need, like a Taga Hells. And this is really good, especially units that hit multiple targets. It's just very strong, it hits on miss. And like I said, it can just win you, it, it, it wins you matches um, when you otherwise shouldn't have. Now, I'm gonna bring up something that I, if you like to play fair, and this is real talk, guys. Listen up. If you like to play fair, you don't like the cheesy stuff, and you don't, you feel guilty. Uh, honest to God, maybe don't pick this up because you will feel dirty. But uh, listen up, guys. Car doesn't care. All right. Play to win is my is my um, motto. And then if Smilegate thinks it's fine, hey, listen. Everyone else is going to be using it, so you might as well at least get one copy yourself, okay? But real, I, I have heard people like you know, not use this because they think it's just too strong. Um, but I, I don't care about stuff like that. But it's that strong, guys, that there's actually people considering that. And then, of course, above here, we got the bottom of knowledge. This one is kind of pricey, guys. So for my newer players, probably skip on this. Like, you get an Abyssal Crown is, like, what, 33% cheaper? So if there's a strong five-star artifact, always pick this up before the bottle. But if you did get a drink recently, 
or like a Draco plate. I would say those are the two most usable artifacts with these. If you have like a, a Rengar's drink you're trying to max out soon, then of course pick these up because the rotation's coming soon. You could easily get two uh, more limit breaks on your drink. Just keep in mind it's really expensive and it's probably not worth passing up something like Abyssal Crown for it, okay? But for limited artifacts, like this is insane. All right. So yeah, guys, just make sure you pick up at least one Abyssal Crown if you like PvP, okay? It's that busted. It's probably the strongest artifact in the game at the moment. All right, that being said, let's go on with today's patch notes. This is why I wanted to make this video because after you pick up your Abyssal Crowns, check out what's coming to the shop from tomorrow night, August 27th. So a little over a month, five weeks. Let's start with the four star artifacts again. Dust Elf Eternus, Elf's Fist, Steadfast, Gatekeeper. It's interesting to see they have this. I'm not sure if this is the first time they introduced one of the newer artifacts in here. But either way, it's cool that they're doing that. Hopefully we'll see a uh, touch of Reiko soon in the five star part because Carr really needs one of those. But like I mentioned, don't pick any of these up guys. Even if you really need like a dust devil, you're gonna get one, I promise. Just summon a few times. There's so many four star artifacts given out in the game. 60 powder, I, I would try to avoid getting any four stars, all right? And none of these are amazing. Oh, Eternus too is one of from the newer rotation. All right, this is the juicy part. Let's talk five star artifacts. First one up is Song of Stars. And while we talk about these, let me try to pull these up. All right, Song of Stars. So this one is very good. It's probably, let me look at that list again. Surprisingly, as strong as this is, this might actually be number four. This actually might be number four in, in terms of strength, which is insane because this is a very good artifact. It's even better when you max it because of course, less RNG. The only thing that happens is you increase the chance for it to actually proc. So what happens is it gives a target debuff. This is really nice for things like Arvin 13, right? Extra debuffs on any Rangers. I think Furious makes ex excellent use of this. And then of course, for things like PVP, Iceria. This is one of Iceria's best artifacts along <coughs> with um, Sasha Thanes. This one just gives a guaranteed, if you max limit break it, guaranteed target on like on her S3 and then S1 and stuff like that. So a really strong artifact for certain ranges that need it. Still a little bit niche though. If you are already doing Wyvern 13 and you're fine without it, avoid it. But I think if you have something like someone like Furious, try to pick one up if you can, okay? Don't miss out on this one. It's kind of hard to get. Five star artifacts period are hard to get. You can go the whole game without finding one, like a specific one you need. So if you've been needing this, pick it up. Otherwise, like I said, this is actually, it's crazy that this might be fourth in power. So next up, we got Spirit's Breath. Spirit's Breath is an interesting one. It's extremely powerful, but very, very limited in who can use it. So this is a mage exclusive artifact. The main use I've seen for this is on Ox Lots with Green Lots and then some kind of new character, usually like Seedom or Sermia. If y'all haven't seen that, look, look it up. But basically, the Spirit's Breath user resets their skill. And then um, both lots and a lots keep pushing up your DPS, right? Meaning you kind of just steal a ton of turns. It's really fun. And you just keep pushing up your DPS unit. As you can see when it's ma max limit broken and you really want to max this one out if you're going to use that kind of combo because not maxed means it, there's a chance you just, your entire combo gets ruined. But yeah, I've seen it mostly used on a lots. I'm not sure. I'm, I bet you guys, if you have other ideas for the Spirit's Breath, if you've seen it used somewhere else, let me know in the comments below. But that's my main, that's like the best use of it that I've seen. It's really fun. I'd like to do one of these. I think I have like three copies because it was in the Mystic Rotations pretty recently on Ruel Banner. But yeah, I don't think I'm gonna spend any powder for it because one, the combo I don't really need at the moment. And um, yeah, I would have to invest a ton just to get this to max limit break. But if y'all like that kind of stuff, Look it up, look up that combo, and um, this could be a very, very strong artifact. Also, if, if any mages in the future use this, this is just one of those really, really strong artifacts. 100% chance to decrease skill cooldown. Kind of insane. Okay, next up is... Okay. Now, I'm not going to put... This should actually be number one. You know what? Yeah, let's make this number one. So let's talk about the number two in the lineup. Rihanna and Lucella. Guys, a ton of people are going to be so excited for this because I believe... It's only been in the rotation once before, only once before ever in the history of the game, since Powder of Knowledge Shop was introduced. Uh, my God, man, this this <laughs> the art the artwork on this one always surprises me. The anatomy, anyways. Let's let's move past that. Um, RNL guys, a lot of people are gonna be really hyped to get this. Another one you kind of want to have maxed because the the scaling on it is insanely powerful. Right, you double the the chances becomes one in ten to one in five, and um, for units that use it, 
let's say Baikin and like Karen, the extra turn units. Another thing, like I was mentioning with this, with the A lots, lots, Sermia kind of combo, look up a, it's not quite infinite, but look up infinite turn Karen, infinite turn Baikin, and um, that might persuade you guys to try and max one of these um, artifacts out because it's actually, it looks so fun. I would love to try it. I think I only have a few RNLs. Another thing I'm not going to pick up because it doesn't quite fit. I'm not running too many thieves um, that need this. So like I said, Baikin, it's really good for Baikin. Uh, Karen for PvP, Baikin and Karen for PvP because for PvE, of course, they use other other things like Joker or Torn Sleeve. But those two along with, I know, Assassin Kali. Assassin Kali is probably the premier unit for this, guys, if you plan to use her at high levels. I think this is a very, very strong artifact on her. And then the, there, almost any thief can make good use of this besides, I would say, like uh, Green Sid, because Green Sid just is so strong with things like Dust Devil. But like, I could see A Sid using this, K Ron using this, even I've seen some Arbiter Villagers use this. Unfortunately, though, like Elia's Knife and Alexa's Basket are just so powerful that they kind of outshine RNL for most units, besides the few I mentioned. So keep that in mind, guys. But very strong thief artifact nonetheless another one you kind of want to max limit break because of how strong it gets with the rng and if you want to use one of those infinite turn units or if you just want to get it for your assassin collie in particular make sure y'all take advantage of this because it hasn't been in the shop for a very very long time all right so get that rnl and then last but definitely not least guys number one on the list rod of amorless Okay, this artifact is probably number two after Abyssal Crown. I said Abyssal Crown is number one. You know, now that I'm saying this, I think Rod of Amaryllis could be number one overall just because it's also usable in PvE, while Crown is only usable in PvP. Rod, while maybe not as oppressive as Crown, like it won't just straight up win you a match, it is almost mandatory for some units. I say mandatory because if you don't have it, well, there's not much you can do. You got to use your, you got to use an alternative. But really, guys, it's as close to mandatory as you can get for a lot of soul weavers. The best in slot artifact for a lot of them, um, you name it. Dien especially, Dien, Akades. I've even, you, you can run on Tamarin. Anyone that needs that extra boost of healing that uses a lot of non-attack skills, this is extremely good on. So you want to have, guys, pick up at least one. Okay, please. Maybe even over crown if you're newer. Actually, I would definitely say over crown if you're newer. Pick up a rod of Am Amaryllis because I guarantee you, you'll get a Mont Morin C2, a Momo. You're going to want at least one of these and, and up to two, up to three. Okay, I have three that I'm using, sometimes two in the same Guild War, and then three just to have so you don't have to swap artifacts. But of course, that's just a luxury. I would say definitely get one. If you can, pick up two. And then more than that, start trying to max limit break one because um, although this definitely is not mandatory, you can get, you can, plus 15 is good enough, guys. Even at end game, you can get away with plus 15, but you really do want to get that extra healing when you're, when you're near the end game. And Rod of Amaryllis is just, it's stayed the best artifact for a very long time now. I don't see it changing anytime soon. So definitely invest in in one of these at least guys and if you can get multiple please do so as well okay do not miss out on this artifact it is extremely extremely strong for soul weavers okay it'll boost your progress so so much last thing real fast before we end this video guys i want to tell you all something real fast you might be asking car how do you get powder knowledge as a newer player free to play player number one try to avoid this really guys unless you are sitting on loads of cash you have a lot of expendable income these are not great value. They're just not good value at all. I, I, I wish they would kind of decrease this cost because it's it's almost not even worth buying for even people that want to spend money. But other than that, guys, besides getting a little bit from, let's say, Abyss Floors, uh, wherever else, random stuff, re reputation achievements, get a little bit from Hunt as well, but mainly the real, the real way you get powder, guys, is from summoning and then powdering or selling artifacts that you don't need anymore, okay? So you want to do a lot of summons if you summon for SSB, if you're going to be summoning for Mui. Let's say they had that new limited unit coming out, guys. Go ahead and keep... I have a three-star artifact guide um, out there floating around. It's one of my first videos, actually, if y'all want to check that out to see what's safe to sell. Maybe I'll make one for four stars and five stars as well. Although when you when you start branching into five stars, guys, there's almost no artifact that's safe to sell because of how rare they are. They might get buff later. Um, four stars, though, I can make something real fast. And yeah, you, you want to just get powder from that as a free to play. You really just sell artifacts you don't need anymore. OK, so start saving those those crap artifacts up. Check out my video for the three stars, especially. 
and definitely pick up an Abyssal Crown, pick up a Rod of Amaryllis. Those two in general are extremely, extremely powerful. The top two picks. All right, 16 hours on the crown. If you can only pick between crown and rod of Amaryllis, I would definitely pick up rod instead, okay? But you got plenty of time for that over a month after tomorrow. All right, guys, anyways, thank you so much for watching. And yeah, we'll probably do more of these. I'll, I'll see if I can make a four star and five star cell guide now that we're gonna be doing these powder videos, okay? All right, guys, I'll catch y'all in the next one. Peace out.